As we've been following all morning, former President Trump is now one step closer to a potential rematch against President Biden after his historic win in Iowa last night. DeSantis and Nikki Haley trailed him in second and third place, while poor, show, while a poor showing for Vivek Ramaswamy led him to suspend his campaign. So for more on this, we want to bring in Ed O'Keefe joining us now from Des Moines, Iowa. Ed, good morning. It's really good to see you. Anne Marie, good morning to you. This was the big victory the Trump campaign was hoping for, and it cements his GOP frontrunner status. Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley claim they got tickets out of Iowa, and they did indeed get out of here. The question is, how much further will they go? Iowa, thank you. We love you all. Former President Donald Trump in Iowa last night taking his first big step in his historic bid to return to the White House. This is the first because the big night is going to be in November when we take back our country. Trump trounced his closest Republican rivals. I want to congratulate Ron and Nikki. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis outpaced polls and came in a distant second, but it was the place he needed to continue his campaign. In spite of all of that that they threw at us, everyone against us, we've got our ticket punched out of Iowa. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley finished third, but argued her strength in the next up contest in New Hampshire and her home state ensure she's now Trump's top opponent. Tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. So how did Trump win Iowa? With broad support across the GOP spectrum, with men, women, older voters, and critically, younger voters, groups he lost in 2016. And according to CBS News entrance polls, he doubled his support from eight years ago with key voting blocks, the very conservative, voters without a college degree, and white evangelical Christians. And Trump dominated among the top issues of concern to caucus goers, immigration and the economy. Iowa also helped shrink the field. And when businessman Vivek Ramaswamy dropped out, he threw his support behind the former president. Now, going forward, he will have my full endorsement. Now, Trump is hoping to leverage his Iowa landslide as the race moves on. And he focuses more attention on President Biden. He is the worst president that we've had in the history of our country. Last night, President Biden acknowledged Trump's win in a fundraising appeal, hoping to pad the $97 million record quarterly haul the Democrats reported earlier this week. As for Trump, he landed in New York overnight and is now expected to attend the second defamation trial brought against him by the author E. Jean Carroll and Maria. Reminder, this campaign season runs through early primary states and courtrooms. So, uh, Ed, you've been talking to voters. I thought it was really interesting um, the, the areas that Donald Trump's uh, growth has or where the, the voters in which he's seen the most growth, which is across the board compared to the last time the Trump name was on the caucus uh, ballot. Can you talk to me about were there, what did they say about the many court cases, um, his kind of bombastic personality? I mean, there were concerns out there among voters that they seem to have just sort of put aside. Among those that back him, Anne-Marie, and we say this over and over again, it doesn't change. They support him. They believe he's being unfairly targeted. Mm. Uh, and they appreciate the sort of, the sort of, uh, uh, they're targeting me because of you mm -hmm. attitude that the former president maintains when he's talking about his legal troubles. Uh, you know, this is a state uh, whose Republican electorate, at least, has become far more conservative, far more MAGA-aligned, you could say, uh, and that was just proven yet again in the results last night. But I would caution, when we look at these, at what we call entrance poll numbers, or surveys of people who were going into the caucus, as opposed to everywhere else where you poll them after, once they come out having voted, this was a small subset, and smaller than eight years ago, of Republicans in this state, the most active, obviously the most enthusiastic for their candidates, and remember, the, they face the added burden of getting out in record low temperatures. So you're talking about the most committed among those in this state who even thought about participating, perhaps not the best example of Republicans nationwide or even in this state. 
Um, so we've talked a lot about how immigration was a big issue, uh, the economy is a big issue. Here's an area that we haven't really talked about. A CBS entrance polling also showed that 90% of Trump voters in these Iowa caucuses think that Joe Biden did not legitimately win the 2020 election. I want to play some sound from Donald Trump talking about elections and his plans for future elections. We're going to straighten out our elections. We're going to do a lot of great things. We're going to try and go to paper ballots as soon as possible. Voter ID. One day, one day elections. You know, we have these elections that last for 62 days. And if you need some more time, take as much time as you want. And so many bad things happen. We have to get rid of mail-in ballots because once you have mail-in ballots, you have crooked elections. Ed, this is after, as you know, numerous court cases, numerous challenges that indicate, that concluded that there was absolutely nothing wrong with the last election. Very legitimate. Um, I'm really surprised by the outcome of that polling. What does this say about Trump supporters? That they agree with him. Uh, and that in this state, uh, they really agree with him. Uh, you know, again, we're talking about, about what was it, roughly 130,000 people in a state of 3 million in a country of 300 million. So you, you know, are looking at an incredibly Trump-favoring, conservative subset of Republican voters. These are shocking numbers. Um, and look at that one, too. If Trump is, is he fit to be president if convicted of a crime? Look, when you're winning the Iowa caucus by record double digits, nobody's ever done it this way, of course you're going to be getting results like this uh, in the entrance polling because that's who came out to support him. And you might think to yourself, because we've been through this now for about eight, nine years, didn't they support him back in the day in right. 2016 when he first ran? No, they didn't. He came in second here to Ted Cruz. He won over those evangelical voters, those very conservative, who at the time aligned themselves with the Texas senator, in part because the then businessman hadn't built the kind of professional operation you need in order to succeed here in Iowa. He did it this time. And at the same time, either he came to their politics or they came to his, and that's what helped him succeed last night. Mm, all right. Ed, thank you very much. Well, the attention turns now to New Hampshire. That state's primary is just a week away. And in five of the last seven GOP primaries, without an incumbent, New Hampshire picked the eventual nominee. Caitlin Huey Burns is there with more. In New Hampshire, supporters of Nikki Haley weren't waiting on Iowa. Hi there. As Iowans caucused Monday, we spent time here with canvassers for a super PAC backing the former UN ambassador. Greg Moore is the group's senior advisor. More than twice as many people will be voting in New Hampshire than will be caucusing in Iowa for a state that's less than half the size. Does New Hampshire take any cues from Iowa? There hasn't been in a non-incumbent election. There hasn't been a situation where the uh, Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary were won by the same person since 1976. You know Iowa starts it. You know that you correct it. One reason New Hampshire goes its own way those registered as independent or undeclared make up more than 39% of voters in the state and can cast ballots in the primary. Voters like Amy Allen, who's leaning towards Haley. I would absolutely not support Trump. I can't support someone that I, I don't respect. CBS News polling shows that while 48% of likely Republican voters in Iowa align themselves with Trump's MAGA mantra, only 33% in New Hampshire do. I'm thrilled to be back in your beautiful state. But the former president leads the polls in New Hampshire, the state that catapulted him to the nomination in 2016 after a loss in Iowa. You started it. Remember, you started it. This time, Haley is hoping New Hampshire starts something for her. Well, that was Caitlin Huey Burns reporting, and Nikki Haley still has a hill to climb in New Hampshire and not much time to do it. Donald Trump maintains the lead in the polls there, and he's expected to have a heavy presence in the state this week, with nearly half a dozen events already on the schedule.